So I'm gonna start this list off with a book that I'm betting none of you have read. It's called Beyond Winning, The Timeless Wisdom of Great Philosopher Coaches. So if you look at the details of this book online, you'll see it was published in 1991, has four reviews with an average ranking of 3.8. That translates into this book is not flying off the shelves. Probably very few people have ever read it. So why is this book then on my list? Because it was the right book, the right message at the right time. The point I want to make here is a book doesn't have to be a highly ranked bestseller to actually be a book that can open your mind and transform your life. In today's video, Jets, I'm sharing with you 10 books that have transformed my life in the last 10 years. Starting things off, we've got Clayton M. Christensen's How Will You Measure Your Life? As a father, as a husband, as a business owner, as a guy that wants to enjoy his life or still reflect on it, this book just spoke to me. I don't know Christensen's full background, but I do know that he wrote in a way that I just really connected with simply why are we doing all this and what's the goal? What's the purpose? What's the bigger meaning behind actually doing everything? As I'm going through this book, it's just, it really felt like he wasn't trying to preach to me. He's a deeply religious man, but he talked about why are we doing what we're doing? And guys, this is so key. So many people go through life and they climb that wall and they realize I'm on the wrong wall. How many of you guys have had that happen to you? You reached that goal, you spent years working on it and you realize you didn't really want it. It was somebody else's dream. You were doing what society told you to do. And I absolutely love how he breaks it out and he helps you hold true to what you're about. Highly recommend this book. Again, guys, go check it out. Clayton M. Christensen's How Will You Measure Your Life? And by the way, gents, all the books I'll be talking about in today's video, I'm linking to down in the description. You can find them actually over at Audible, who is the sponsor of today's video. And if you've never checked out Audible or it's been a while, you should really go see what they've got going on. What I love are the Audible Originals. So as an Audible member, every single month, I get two of these Audible Originals thrown right in. And what I love about this, that I can listen to anytime, anywhere, on any device. And if I decide to quit, leave Audible, guess what? I get to, of course, keep all the audiobooks right there. You'll still maintain access. So I know what's important for me because I've got literally hundreds of books on my phone. Gents, to start listening with a free 30-day Audible trial in your first audiobook, plus two Audible originals for free, go to audible.com slash RMRS or text RMRS to 500, 500. Again, that's audible.com slash RMRS or text RMRS to 500, 500. Next up, I've got a Stephen King book. Yes, a Stephen King book. Not one of his horror books though. I've actually never read those. What I have read though is On Writing, a memoir of the craft. And I absolutely love this book. So a lot of people ask, Antonio, how do you create so much content? I mean, you've written like over a thousand articles. You've made over a thousand videos. You've got all this content out there. How are you so prolific with all this stuff? And it really comes back to this book I read by Stephen King. And we talked about you sit down and you do the work. And he talked about every single day, he would sit there and he would have no view. He would sit at this desk and he would have to write so many pages and he would sit there until he did it. You know, it sounds very simple, but so many people don't put in the work. And to see a guy that's able to put out a book, sometimes twice a year, these huge volumes, these great books, which, you know, entrance millions of people, that it really inspired me. You know what? I can do that. I can sit down and I can put in the work. Definitely highly recommended. Go check it out. Next up, we've got The Power of Moments, Why Certain Experiences Have Extraordinary Impact by Chip and Dan Heath. Absolutely love this book because it talks about, have you ever thought about why there are certain things in your life you remember? The vast majority of your life you do not. What did you have for breakfast four weeks ago? Of course, you don't know. No one remembers breakfast, but what we do remember those big events in our life. And what was so cool about this book is they talked about how you can actually choose to create those moments with your family with your loved ones, with even people at work. So if you want to turn your company around, you want to have extraordinary, impactful moments, they actually talk about how to do this with people. So if you want to get rid of, you know, reduce returns, grow your company, or you have a nonprofit that you really want to have a huge impact on the people that you have a very short amount of time to interact with, it's an extraordinary book, one that 
goes you can apply it to business you can apply it to your life and i advise you to apply it to your life because what if you could just yeah you don't get to see your girlfriend all the time you want to spend more time with her what if you could create these extraordinary moments it doesn't cost a whole lot of money they talk about how to do it in this book next up we've got the 50th law by 50 cent and robert green i love the stories i love everything that's in this book he's got some other books robert green uh, the laws of human nature is really good it's going to be twice as long though but He's one of the few authors that I have seen that actually have been able to talk about the power of force and we're talking physical force and this is something a lot of people ignore especially academics don't have any experience with this but I saw this in the Marine Corps that yeah you know we can talk and talk but when it comes down to it armed tough men that go in and basically push things around they they still you know into these societies they're not they shouldn't be ignored when you look at what Putin is able to go do in Ukraine or those that really aren't afraid of what other people are going to say or what they think or that they're going to do some online petition this is one of those books that when you read it you're like wow this is solid information highly recommend for any student of history anyone that really wants to understand force and power in the world next up we've got change anything the new science of personal success it was actually written by a number of authors but Patterson's the lead author what I love about this it's very much research-based and talks all about how to get people to change and to go down now there's been a lot of other books such as habits I've talked about atomic habits as well but those are much more recent this one was written over a decade ago and I have to say it was the first one I read on the subject and it had a profound impact on me because I never thought about how whenever we're trying to make things happen how if we smooth out the path if we got get rid of all these distractions if we actually create systems so that we will actually do the change we're more likely to do them if you understand the powers in this book right here you're going to be able to make change whether it be yourself your life whether it be others it's amazing the power that's in this book next up we've got grit by angela duckworth and i absolutely love this one because everyone a lot of times people think oh you know someone's good at this because they were born that way or they have this natural talent and really she dispels that myth and she gets into what what really separates those that achieve those that are able to succeed versus those that fail and it really comes down to a lot of times simply being able to put in the time put in the reps and to be able to deal and overcome with failure i remember when i went through marine corps you know officer candidate school it was something that i the whole reason i went through it is i wanted to challenge myself and i knew if i could get through this that the rest of my life would be a breeze having gone through that experience having gone through that hardship and realize that there's a lot of power when you do something like that and that's what they talk about in this book so if you want your kids to succeed you want your employees to succeed you want to succeed you need to develop grit and she talks about how to do that next up we've got the road less stupid by keith j cunningham absolutely love this book so here's a guy that has been very successful in life and he talks about you know it's not about always making the right decision in fact it's rarely that it's about not making the stupid decision and by simply taking the time to think and he talks about thinking time he actually breaks out how to get into thinking time and to have somebody that has had these all this great success in life to actually break out how to avoid these mistakes how to not basically pay the stupid tax an amazing book highly recommended now what you're not going to find on this list is the death of socrates or meditations great books i've read them i was a philosophy major but i find that they're kind of hard to digest and they're not books i want to read again and again ego is the enemy by ryan holiday on the other hand i love reading every few months i'm going to read this book why because he's able to take the you know talks about marcus aurelius and he gets into these deep you know the stoics and these philosophers he really just puts it together i think much better than the vast majority of people out there and it's this information remembering the ancient wisdom that's been passed on from generation to generation and to be able to get through this it's amazing ego is the enemy is such a powerful week because he talks about how our biggest enemy in life is this inflated ego that we all develop I know I've developed it. I bet many of you guys have. And it's something that when you get through this book, it's a constant reminder. It's something that really forces you to reflect on, hey, am I, you know, believing? Am I, am I drinking my own Kool-Aid? Am I not, you know, listening to the voices around me that are trying to keep me from doing something stupid? Essentialism, the disciplined pursuit of less by Greg McGowan. 
One of my personal favorites, I listen to this probably every two months. This is one of those refreshing books that just helps me get my life in order. All of us are running into problems where, you know, we've got all these apps on our phone. We've got all these people grind, grabbing our attention. If you're a family man or if you just got a girlfriend, if you want to, you know, have people that you stay in touch with, good friends from college, you know what it's like. You just get way too busy with life. How do you do it all? And what Greg talks about in this book is that you don't. You cut out the non-essential. You have to go through and realize that the vast majority of things in your life, they are noise. They are distractions. And this is something that you've got to do every couple months because yes, even when I get everything lined up, within the period of a couple months, I get a lot of distractions that jump back into my life and it's something that I need to take the step back and I need to go through this and I need to cut off the non-essential. So no matter where you're at in life, Essentialism by Greg McGowan, highly recommended. So let's talk about money. The issue I think is that most of us have gotten bad advice about money. So there's tons of books I could recommend. Some of them are going to be very high level. They talk about the right mindset, especially if you want to build long-term wealth. Other books out there, they're going to be ultra specific. They're going to talk, you know, this one right here just got into the exacting details about how I should set up my finances as an entrepreneur. Absolutely love this book. But the book I want to highly recommend that you start with is I Will Teach You to Be Rich by Ramit Sethi. There are many other books out there like this. I really like his point always about, you know, people say, oh, you should save money. Don't buy a latte. Never buy anything at Starbucks. He's like, you know what? If that makes you happy, do it. But instead, go over and renegotiate on your home loan and save tens of thousands of dollars right there by actually noticing that your credit score got better in the last five years and that you should actually go and refinance the whole thing. These are the kind of things, he talks about the big wins and I don't see a lot of, I see everyone's trying to get you to do these things that you don't want to do versus he's like, nah, you know, it's okay right now, but focus in on the big wins and that's what he zeroes in on. One thing I stole from Ramit, which I haven't seen other people talk about is to have multiple savings accounts. We're not talking just two or three, we're talking in my case, case, 20 savings accounts. And all of a sudden I realized that, hey, anything we want to save up money for, vacations for each of our kids. I mean, I've got an account for my dog because we take the dog to the vet, you know, for food and everything. We just simply put money away every single month. So there's just money always sitting there and it's not something that comes off of a credit card or goes, you know, even out of our checking account. It's just simply the dog has its own account. Yes, it does. Next up, we've got the formula, the universal laws of success by Barbarossi. And what I love about this guy is that he actually took, he's a network scientist and he took all this information to figure out what truly makes somebody successful. And he didn't shy away from the fact that a lot of it is actually the intangibles. He did say, of course, that you've got to have talent. You've got to be good at something. And he gives all these examples of people who were great at something that nobody's ever heard of, that history has forgotten. Why? Because they didn't have these other parts of the formula, which he talks about is being able to engage with others, being able to build up a reputation to actually, it's really interesting. He talks about how do you value art? Why is some art worth a whole lot and other art is not worth as much? And what he came to find out is it was the artists who not only had great talent, but they also got their art to be shown in certain galleries by they, they had built up relationships. They were actually in certain areas that they were actually get their art there. So very interesting. If you're someone that's into art, if you're someone that's trying to figure out how to be the best in your field, you've got to read, you've got to get through this book. Now I'm a huge fan of history. So I'm going to bring in a couple right here. I've got the lessons of history by Will and Ariel Durant and a short history of nearly everything by Bill Bryson. Now, if you've read either of these or you're familiar with these authors, you realize they're very different. They couldn't talk about history in different, in more different ways, but both of them, if you make it through this, you are going to all of a sudden just have a better understanding of why we do what we do and a bigger scope of just human nature. And what's cool and I love about history is that when you understand it, you start to see what's going on in the news today and you realize that there is nothing new, that we're simply about human nature and that we will always do these things. You need to be careful of human beings because we have some very bad tendencies, especially when we get into groups and this has been shown again and again throughout history. So to actually get through both of these, highly recommended, again, I'll link to the audio versions down in the description, which I absolutely love. So what video to watch next? How about my list of books for ambitious men? So if you want to go out there and change the world, you want to start a nonprofit that's going to help people, you want to start a business that's going to make you a multimillionaire. Guys, you want to check out this list? I've got for you right here.